Hi guys! I'm back this week after the 30 day challenge where I did shorts for almost every day for 30 days. And so now I'm returning and I'm gonna finish posting my oil paintings that I did during last semester of college. And so for this oil painting, we are working on painting impressionistic style. And so that basically means that unlike realism, any color you see, you take it and you just about blow it out of proportion. And that is definitely what I would call my style because I love color and I love exaggerating any colors I see. So it was very interesting because I do not have a picture of the color palette this time, but basically what the color palette looked like was that he gave us every single color except for black and brown. So that meant that we had to mix the colors together until we could find the right hue to at least impersonate black and brown. So even when, even in the corner where it looked like it almost went black, it was still very red and basically to create very dark browns or an almost black, I had to mix just about every single hue together to get that color. And it was really interesting. I did not know that that was impressionistic style, but it kind of makes sense because it's known for being super colorful. So it would kind of make sense that you wouldn't be allowed to have any color that would dim it because that means that you don't have grays so you can't tone any of the colors, they just are what they are. And so, since I basically paint, or painted a, or mixed an entire color wheel, to begin the painting, I simply went around the color wheel adding in every single color that I saw. And the reason that I chose the still life that I did, the setup, that I did was because impressionistic style allows you to not really make up colors but just just short of making them up like if you see even the slightest hint of a color then you can full-on slap that color on and so I decided to choose this rather dull colored night because I thought it would be very interesting and a challenge to be able to see colors that aren't there and to paint a gray, a gray colored person without the ability to actually have gray paint. So I thought that that was very interesting and I also decided that for fun, because I this is one of the last paintings I could do at college, like the semester was almost over. So just for fun, I decided to try to see how textured I could get the painting because I have always worked with acrylic and what I noticed with oil paint was that it just allowed for a lot more texture than I was used to. So I tried my best to add a lot of texture. I had looked at a lot of impressionistic paintings and they all seemed to have like a dabbled effect. So while I did not keep it all the way through the painting, that was how I began the painting, was just basically by stabbing my brush into the painting and just giving it a very dabbled effect to see if it would create something that I would like or not. Whereas I, th it kind of faded a lot, like, because what he told us to do for this painting was to basically blow everything out of proportion at the beginning and then to rein it in 
and then to let it go a little wild at the very end. So that's why I kind of did here, like here you can see that the colors are very obnoxious at this point. Like I would never leave a painting like it is here, but it definitely helped later on because even when I toned it down, you could still kind of see the colors underneath. Although looking back, I think for the impressionistic style, it would have been better to do maybe a less textured painting because since the painting I kept putting on was so thick, it kind of covered up all the layers that I had worked so hard to incorporate because I wanted to add as many layers as possible to kind of help it to look good. And so it was very fun to kind of go through the different layers and after I'd put all of the colors on I started trying to add the well black and grayish tones because I didn't actually have any so it was really weird and hard to do what I wanted to do and it it definitely went through a lot of complicated phases where I kind of hated it but I just had to keep working through it and putting more and more on because I definitely made it more complicated than it needed to be because most people in my class since it was impressionistic style just chose the absolutely most colorful objects they could find whereas I tried to choose a very not colorful object so that I could d use the impressionistic style to the best of my ability and it was definitely a very odd experience but I think it was one of my favorite painting styles so far it was mm, I would say it was like it fit the setup because I tried to do a very fantasy like painting like I want it to look almost like there might he might be facing a dragon or something like I want it to look like there was light flickering off of everything and I chose like the very red background so it was very it was very interesting to try to push everything to the max of what it could be and like you see here it at many points like I overdid certain things so I had to come back and try to put in more color because I tried to brighten it so much that I lost a lot of the color so I had to keep putting more back and I also decided to try to make the background less in focus because I do like painting fabric and the folds in the fabric but when I tried to put detail into those folds I I didn't like it as much because I wanted it to be very much I wanted it to be pushed into the background because the strange um vine vein looking stuff that will eventually come over the night I wanted those to be farthest forward in the foreground and then I wanted the night to be more middle ground and then I wanted the fabric to be very much in the background and it was very hard to continue to do that because everything I just wanted to do detail because that's just what I tend to do but it was also very fun to leave stuff imperfect and here is where I try to begin taming the painting because it looked very obnoxious and blown out and at this point you can kind of see how I went too far and I'll have and I end up bringing 
all of the color back into it. But this was a very interesting part of the painting for me because all of the tones that you see that look like gray, none of them involved adding any black. So instead of having a gray scale, it all is toned a certain color instead of being pure gray. And that definitely added a lot of volume and um, it just was very, oh, it's hard to find the words. It was very interesting and dynamic because all of a sudden it wasn't just gray, it was either a warm gray, a cool gray, a red gray or an orange gray or blue gray. Like there was, it was very interesting to no longer just have grays. Like all of them were tinted a certain color and it was very odd, but I did obviously miss the color that I had built up. So I started adding the color back in once again, blowing it way out of proportion just to make sure that the color schemes I had still got in there, but I still try to make it a lot darker than the background because that's one thing that I noticed was it helped push the background farther back to have the background light and the night to have a lot darker because that's how it looked when I was painting and it was very hard to keep reminding myself to paint it how it looks because even though it's impressionistic style and a lot of it is kind of in your imagination it's still very important to look at what you're painting and make sure that you're still painting what's in front of you even though you're slightly exaggerating it. So it was very, it was, it was definitely a challenge and definitely took a lot of time, maybe even a little bit more than I usually spend on my paintings. Cause we only had, I think we only had a week to do this painting. And it was definitely something that should have had um, at least two weeks maybe for, college at least because I definitely had to come in a lot outside of class to work on the paintings because we always had a two hour class period three times a week to come in and work on our paintings but I had to come in every day to put in the extra time just because it was a very complex painting to fight between my imagination and what was actually in front of me. It was very hard because I just, it was hard for me to tone down the colors because it had been so long since I was allowed to use colors and I just wanted to absolutely throw on every single color that I had mixed because I loved the palette that was in front of me and it just, I had to put it all on but I also needed to straight stay true to what was in front of me so it was very hard to kind of make peace between the two and like marry the two ideas of what was in front of me and what I wanted it to look like but I definitely like the style it it reminds me of like a storybook like it looks like something that should be in a children's storybook or something because I love I love storybooks like that where everything is absolutely more colorful than it should be, but it still makes sense. And I love that so much. And I I don't really know exactly where I want to go with my degree once I graduate cuz I am in the illustration major right now. But I don't know if I want to do a lot of book illustrations or cover art because I would absolutely love to do that but I'm I'm mostly just hoping that I could freelance and eventually get my name out there enough that people will come to me asking for stuff because I 
I do prefer freelance like that because unlike most artists who prefer to simply make their art and then sell it, I strangely prefer to have someone tell me at least a broad idea or give me a springboard to jump off of. Like, I absolutely love art classes because the teacher will give you a direction to go and then you can simply go crazy with the direction he gave you. And I kind of want my career to be like that. I want someone to come to me, whether or not they have a broad idea or a very specific idea of what they want. I, that's what I want to do. I want someone to come with me with a broad idea of what they want and then I want to be able to go off of that idea and make their imagination come to life because that is the best feeling in the world and I want people to be able to feel like that even if they do not have the artistic ability to do it themselves. I want to be able to bring other people's imagination to life. So yeah, I hope, I hope this helped make sense of what I am doing and why I am doing it because I'm hoping to build my talents to the point that I can help other people bring their imagination and dreams to life because that's what I love doing. I, it's fun to do art for myself, but it is very rewarding to do art for other people and see their face when they see something they didn't think could actually be put on paper in front of them. And it, it's, it's very rewarding, and I want that to be my career for the rest of my life. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that it made some sense and gave you something to think about. Alright, bye!